So you're really optimizing what it is that you're wearing and how it is that you're wearing it because that will take something that is sort of a look, sort of a costume, like you have them because other people have them and, and make it into something that is unique to you and works for you. Hello adventurers, we are in my basement again today because uh, it's actually snowing again here in uh, New England and it's very windy. I wanted to be outside but it um, doesn't look like that's going to happen for me today. So I thought I would take the opportunity since archery is an indoor activity for me at the moment to test out a couple of new things that I'm curious about. So for those of you not aware, I am practicing the speed archery, combat archery style uh, popularized by Lars Anderson. I have a couple of videos on that already. Uh, they'll be in a playlist or something like that. But so I, I'm becoming more and more proficient with that. And with that comes the question of what else, what else can I do with this? Now that I'm able to knock an arrow and fire it very quickly, uh, how does this progress further? Can I wear a sword with it, for instance, which is what I'm going to be trying first, um, to try to figure out, you know, how, how realistic really is this for what it is that I'm trying to do, which is taking this archery style and then moving it into a fantasy adventurer context. I did do a video where I just tested with the sword, like how I would carry it, so I'm not going to be testing how easy it is to like run with all of this stuff on, because if I can't even shoot with it, then that means something needs to be reworked. So shooting comes first. So with things like this, the question really becomes, is there historical precedent for this even having been done? And according to what I've been able to find, the answer to that's really kind of no. Because if you're wearing a sidearm, like a weapon, with the intention of going to battle with it, but you're an archer, uh, odds are you're not really going to be having to deal with a quiver that much because barrels or having your arrows stuck in the ground, you can just have more arrows that way. And you're generally going to be stationary, so if you're having a sidearm, it's not going to be that much in the way. And if you're carrying a quiver or you're going hunting and you just have a couple of arrows that you need to be mobile with, you're probably not going to bring a sword, because why would you do that? You don't need a sword to go hunting for a deer or a rabbit, you just need a big knife, and that is much easier to carry. So we really are trying to figure out how to do something that probably wasn't really done, and for good reason. Okay, so I'm sure you all could see there that I was <laughs> running into the problem of bumping my arrows up into my sword hilt there. And that wasn't a problem with the quiver placement either, that's a problem with the sword placement. So if the sword was on my back, I wouldn't have that problem. Okay, so I, as you can see, I moved my uh, sword onto my back here. This obviously uh, isn't a practical back scabbard, um, though I do plan on making one one day. Um, but this is already so much better. It's not hanging at the angle I would prefer. I'd rather it was here, but this is just the way the scabbard is made and I'm not wearing it correctly, so there you go. Um, but this this is already uh, so much better. Now, in my mind's eye, theoretically, I think you would be able to attach a quiver to your back also over the scabbard. I would want the sword to be closer to me because it's heavier and then the... And then the uh, quiver to be farther away from me because it doesn't matter as much. But this, having everything sort of right here, having the sword, and then having your arrows down here, already feels much more efficient to me. Um, not everything is, is on your waist, and it's also a little strange because with the sword there, you have a lot more weight on this side, but you do have something big and bulky on this side, and it just makes you very off-kilter. Um, you can't move around a whole lot but this way. I mean, I have my whole side open here, so I can, I feel like I can be much more athletic this way. But yeah, this is, this is immediately better to me as an option, especially for a bow this small where I'm not having to come all the way to full draw. It's not a war bow. Um, in my context, this is more the uh, Ranger Aragorn size, like his bow is probably about uh, this big. Viggo Mortensen is taller than me, obviously, but I prefer having the sword on the back and the quiver on the side to having the quiver on the back and the sword on the side because I already, if you watch my video on how would you carry a sword, um, again linked up here, my, my verdict, at least without even trying the back scabbard, was that I preferred to just carry the sword in its scabbard like in my hand. This is all part of sort of a 
larger concept that I am exploring. And I, and I picked this up, you know, just from watching military guys talk about their kids. So not medieval specific, but I, I really think it applies. And that is to not let yourself get stuck in this idea of, oh, well, this is how it looks in this picture. This is how it looks in this movie. So this is how, you know, I'm going to do it. And this is the way to do it. And this is, this is the only way that it can be. Your, your kit is, is dynamic and it's made of, up of pieces and you shouldn't be fighting those pieces. It should all work together in a way that helps you do what you need to do. So you don't always need to have your sword. You don't always need to have your bow. And when you have them both, they don't always need to be in the same place. So your kit, your loadout really should fit your context. And I would really encourage everyone to sort of play around with the different contexts that they see themselves uh, being in most often the types of scenarios that you are preparing for um, on your hikes or for your reenactment or at a LARP. So you're really optimizing what it is that you're wearing and how it is that you're wearing it because that will take something that is sort of a look, sort of a costume, like you have them because other people have them and, and make it into something that is unique to you and works for you. Actually, given, given that context, realistically, like this sort of setup is completely viable for a LARP. The whole point is that you're a fantasy adventurer and you have all of your stuff on you because you're looking for trouble, you're looking for adventure. So that's why, that's like the only context you would have all of this in aside from war. And if it's established even in war, you wouldn't do this. In the context of a fantasy medieval adventurer, how does this work for LARP? So here's the other thing with LARP arrows. You can have way less of them and their heads are facing up. That's probably the biggest difference because when you have regular arrows, I mean, this is a huge quiver anyway. This is four LARP arrows. And even though it's four LARP arrows, I can fit five. I could fit a couple more probably, but, and they're all head up, which means when you pull one out, you have to flip it around in order to get to the knock in the first place. And they're heavier at the tip here. So it's a lot harder to uh, control just by holding it at the edge there. but you can knock and fire. Now, practicing this style of archery in a LARP context actually really makes a lot of sense because of the limited number of arrows that you're carrying and the fact that you will probably be walking around the battlefield to pick up arrows that have already been fired and then having to knock them and fire them quickly at an opponent. And because it's a LARP and you're not actually trying to hurt anybody, your speed is increased because you don't always have to come to full draw with the bow. I'm going to try to use the weight at the head of the arrows to my advantage. Now, given that the arrows are, again, head up, when I go to draw one out, I'm using the fact that it's heavier at this end to help me control the arrow so that I can grab it quickly at this end, knock it theoretically. There we go. They're bouncing back at me because they're foam. But you know, most so most people at LARPs are, you know, they're grabbing an arrow, they have to take it out, they to get it situated or whatever, and then they have to knock it because they're firing from the left side of the bow, and then they aim, and then they pull. And that rate of fire is very, very slow. But at least the LARP rules that I play by, arrows deal a lot of damage. And if you can get off one, two, three arrows very quickly because you practice speed archery, oh man. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? Just trying to work through it. You can flip them. Yeah, the weight actually really helps if you're using it. So there I am in the, in the grip position I talk about in my previous videos. Go ahead and flip that one up. Let me know, <laughs> let me know in the comments what you think. If you showed up to a LARP and then someone started Lars Andersoning LARP arrows at you, what, what would you, what would you do? If you had a shield, you'd probably just block them all, but, um, I'm gonna do that. Ho ho ho, yeah. We like to have fun here. So thanks for watching today's video, guys. Uh, I wish I could have gone outside. I have kind of a cool video planned, but hopefully I can get that done next week. So look forward to that. Thanks for joining me on my archery journey as I continue to progress with different styles and loadouts here. And I really hope you learned something and that you found something that maybe you hadn't thought of before and that you are going to use and try with your own kit. And that being said, I uh, hope to see you next time, and good luck on your adventures. <laughs>